about that. So uh, the difference of awareness and mindfulness, this is something that I meant to say already on day one or day two, but I always forget things. I have, I have a paper and a, and a pen here that I'm making notes when I remember something, but if I don't make a note, forget it. <laughs> so uh, mindfulness and awareness. So mindfulness training, which is mostly what shamatha practice is, that's what it is, and what mostly, you know, Buddhism, different Buddhist schools, they uh, have that view of mindfulness training instead of awareness training. So if somebody, you know, a beginner starts to practice, uh, let's say Zen Buddhism, for example, or can be Theravada, or can be many of some of the many schools. Um, he or she is told how to sit, how to keep your put your body in order, and then usually the practice that is taught first is um, mind, mindfulness of the body, mindfulness sensations, and or following the breath, usually in the gut or here, in the uh, bridge of the nose. So, I'll just use an, my example in the following, the breath in the gut. I used to do that when I started Zen Buddhism, I did that. So, when we are doing that practice from the mindfulness perspective, uh, it means that we put our attention on the breath, and then we get distracted. Oh, I can get distracted. Oh. And this is how it is, you know, doing the practice, getting distracted, remembering the practice, getting back to it, and again getting distracted. It's sort of like a getting back to drawing a line, and then you get distracted to other things and, oh, drawing the line and, you know, that kind of thing. It's actually a very good analogy of drawing the line because to able to draw a straight line or a symmetrical line you have to be really focused. Like this. You have to follow it actively. But, <clears throat> uh, so this is mindfulness, you know, applying mindfulness, concentration, focus, intention. But the same practice can be done from awareness point of view. Mindfulness practices can be done from awareness point of view, which is how I taught you the following of the breath in the gut. That's how we did it. There is this knowing and then you follow the breath in the gut. Plus there's the extra spin of the Chokchen center, keeping one's attention in the Chokchen center. So <clears throat> it's a very different well, of course, you, you do get distracted from awareness also. Thoughts come up, uh, emotions come up, but it's a very different practice, you know, uh, to be like this, and then getting distracted to something. And then remembering, oh, the space. Not the thing, but the space. You know, it's a very different thing because you don't have to use the concentration muscle, figuratively speaking. Um, and it's much more profound as well. Um, of course, the, for a 
beginner of meditation that mindfulness practices when you manage to when you uh, build that muscle of concentration a little bit and then you can let your uh, mind rest on the object for a little while let's say from few few seconds to 10 15 seconds or more um, I guess it's the first couple of seconds that that require the most training discipline to get it going and then when you can hold it for a few seconds then it quite easily you can extend it significantly longer uh, but anyway uh, applying that mindfulness to some some object you know and the stillness of mind that follows through it because when you're focusing on something kind of having a pressure on it as i was using the analogy of uh, volume adjustment in stereos in analog stereos you can have the adjustment low or higher or in the max so when you have that uh, concentration like pressure doesn't have to be much but pressure on that object all other things in the mind thoughts emotions they disappear into the periphery and this is very good because you know as a, as a beginner we can experience the stillness of the mind thoughtlessness which is a huge release it's an immense release for especially for the modern people who who have this as an you know their problem constant chatter people can't sleep and mind is scattered all the time but the challenge is to do those to do the training to be able to focus long enough for that to happen right mm -hmm. if you have done it and most of you have done it uh, if not all you know you know how much you have to do those preps to be able to get to serious weights you know uh, but it's slightly different with Chok Chen. Um, well, maybe I'll just mention something that, um, like Joe was asking, asking, and we were talking about all these different techniques and tools in the toolbox that I I keep teaching, and and that kind of led me to think something that I've thought before that that maybe should I maybe I should. Uh, teach less things on the other hand you're not supposed to use all either so like it said that Shakyamuni Buddha taught 84,000 ways I'm not teaching that many but <laughs> I may be teaching um, a hundred different little tools but uh, any one of them single one of them is enough to do the trick if you learn how to use it if you become an expert <clears throat> like a yeah well a good analogy for becoming an expert with one tool is that you could make that statue with one tool just using a knife or some what do you call that this chisel, chisel. yeah and it's pretty you know, impressive statue, <laughs> but just an example that um, might be just pet. If it does the trick, why not? If you need an, like an example, you need to get a experiential pointing out John mentioned different fingers pointing at the same moon in your talk and uh, like if you need the finger that uh, points out in the way that it gives you the experience of the moon that's Guru Yoga so these are just that was a good way to put it that different fingers pointing at the same moon 
Uh, yeah, so anyway, I was thinking about whether if I should narrow down, teach less things. I'll think about it. But this was something that I just meant to say in side sentence and what was the main course I was speaking about. Mindfulness and awareness. Yeah, but there was something something about it. Ethics. No, not that one. I think it was the Dzogchen view you were about to get to. I think you had addressed the mindfulness view. Yeah. You were going to say what was subtly different between Zakshan and, mindf- and the mindfulness view. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <clears throat> obviously, you know, the natural state is not merely stillness or thoughtlessness of mind. You know, you can be calm but still confused and dissatisfied. So <clears throat> you might do shamatha practices like following of the be- breath hours on end and still be, you know, not belly full you know, not satisfied. But um, even a glimpse, short glimpse, one or two seconds of the natural state, it gives a very different, it's a very different thing because it's a complete release for that one or two seconds. It's home, being at home for one or two seconds. And then you just keep doing it again and again and again. And that's very, very different than doing mindfulness again and again and again. It's just way more deeper satisfaction. So this is something I I wanted to say about awareness and mindfulness because I didn't say it before. And then uh, for this session I would like us to uh, go into a classic. We've been uh, practicing and workshopping on Ati Yoga, Shamatta and Vipassana <coughs> and now I have another classic pointer for the natural state which is just sitting. You must have heard that before. <laughs> just sitting. <coughs> so take a good sitting posture. <coughs> So make your body sit in a way that you can comfortably sit still without external movement as long as possible. When at some point your posture becomes uncomfortable, pain, uh, numbness, something, adjust or change posture. But until then, sit, physical body, completely still. And now in the beginning, when you sit down, have a moment to, you know, to allow the body to settle really thoroughly. Like when you sit down like this, don't immediately become like a rock. That's not the way. It should be done. So you, during the first one or two minutes, you align the body outwardly and inwardly very carefully. Spine straight, shoulders relaxed chest relaxed, solar plexus relaxed, stomach and side muscles relaxed, relaxing the jaw, 
mouth, tongue, gums, relaxing eyes and muscles around the eyes, relaxing scalp, all the way to the neck, down the back, lower back, deep in the lower back, buttocks, What is this joint? Hip. Hip joints. Thighs. Knees. <coughs> lower part of the leg. And the extremity of the leg. The breathing can move freely. Eyes um, resting in one position. So you have set your physical body to sit firmly while letting the energies of the mind, the energy body, to flow freely. It's sort of like, like in the movie Matrix, this main character can see inside solid structures he can see this flowing of light as numbers inside, in buildings, in people, in whatever. If we could see in the same way, look at a tree and see the uh, juices, vitality flowing in a tree or any living organism, in the same way, energy can flow freely in our body and in our mind. Just sit. Just sit for a few minutes and after a few minutes I'll tie this to what we have learned, to Chokchen practice. So things can come and go, thoughts, emotions are not the enemy. And you are not um, initiating any action. 
not initiating any action, action or uh, starting to use a technique, not using a remedy, not taking a remedy. So your body sits, but you're not really doing a body mindfulness exercise, scanning through the body. You know already that the body sits. And you know already that natural awareness pervades the pod, the body pervades everything your body your mind <clears throat> So <clears throat> we've been working on the three basic characteristics of the natural state. One, knowing. Knowing just as it is, without any thing else. Or, at moments, this knowing can become, uh, take the form of mindfulness, sort of like um, sort of like as if the knowing awareness is like a mass And then when you become aware of some tension or some um, sensation in the body or something in the mind, and then sort of like a spotlight of mindfulness, attention uh, goes into that, from that mindfulness, and no, from that awareness, that basis. Like there is this ground mass, this awareness and then when your attention goes somewhere it's like the mindfulness growing out from that awareness for a moment knowing the knowing reaches to attend something some object but and, and can keep attending while having that base knowing but then at some point it can be the mindfulness can be dropped and then you just return to that basic knowing, basic awareness, child returns to the mother. <clears throat> so that is the most important, knowing that knowing, 
but then also equally important two other qualities aliveness the recognition that this knowing is alive like similarly as water brings life it's moist like water like vapor and it brings life to that clarity of knowing if we only too forcefully focus on that knowing we end up with just a neutral transparency neutral jewel neutral glass and that's not very fulfilling so knowing moisture and stability stability of awareness immovable undestructible fire doesn't burn it Cold doesn't make it cold, ice doesn't make it cold, it's stable, no matter what relative conditions, the original mind stays and is perfectly happy like that. So just sitting in those three basic characteristics as it's many times said in Zen Buddhism, Chan Buddhism that you just sit on your ass just sit in that recognition but now we kind of clarified the really the essential points of just sitting. Not easy at all to properly understand the three characteristics just by sitting down with your physical body and not receiving any other instructions. Okay, bring your palms together and make a bow. <clears throat> Let's do a round of 
Chokchen dance and then come back sitting. So we are not doing the resting today. <laughs>